Good morning. It's Monday morning again. Today is August 22nd, and I am happy to be here with you again. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries. This is an outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious, or for the faithful folks who don't have a church home at the moment. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, and I encourage you to check that out. There are so many encouraging stories there. But I go live every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time to provide some tips or strategies or insights or a unique take on spiritual health that will help you throughout the week and hopefully beyond. So I have learned a lesson lately, and it's a lesson that's popped up a lot recently. And that lesson is keep it simple. Yeah, nothing earth shattering here, but again, an endorsement for keeping things simple. I have the habit of two kind of extreme responses. Most of the time I do really well. I hit the center and I get the right balance, but I have a tendency to either kind of phone it in and I, you know, show up in a way where I could have done more. Or the more common thing I do is the opposite end of that and overcomplicate things. For instance, recently we had a family reunion on my husband's side of the family and I was asked to bring a dessert. Cool, no problem. I was thinking some brownies. My husband loves brownies. I could even make two pans of brownies, one with nuts, one without, because not everybody likes brownies the same way, though most everybody likes brownies in one way or the other. But then I thought, well, I could make a cake and I could add a few things to it to make it a little better. And if I just make a cake, I could make it in the round things and put some filling in the middle. And I could whip up some buttercream icing to go on top. I have the butter, I have powdered sugar, I could do that pretty simply. So what started out as simple brownies turned into this th layer cake with filling in the middle and, you know, I got to add a few things to the cake mix to make it taste homemade and to be extra moist and delicious. So what turned out to be a really simple thing ended up being a pretty long and in-depth and complicated project because I made an error in the icing the first time, had to throw that batch out, go back and get some more. And it just wasn't happening real well for me that morning. And that should have told me something, something very simple that I've done a hundred times before. Not working out is usually a sign that maybe I'm not on the right track, but I wasn't listening. So I sent Andy back to the store and he got the ingredients I needed and I whipped it up again and we get there. It's hot, it's August. The reunion is on the farm, it's outside. What was I thinking? So you know what happens to a buttercream icing when it's outside, right? Yeah, so the cake looked awful. I mean, it looked terrible. It tasted good, but who's gonna wanna cut into a slice of this? Anyway, I have a habit of complicating things. A lot of times with worship services, whether they're in the church or whether they're there in the community at a different location, I have this habit of thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we just did this? Or we could add this, wouldn't that be fun? And before I know it, I've got this whole system that has so many moving parts that it becomes complicated and difficult to pivot. And sometimes we need to pivot. So I've noticed that within myself and it came up recently in other ways when I went to automate different processes and I didn't get every last detail right and it ended up causing all kinds of stress. So anyway, I decided I needed to talk about this for my sake and maybe others have the same habit that I do. So today I wanna to talk about keeping things simple. Keep it simple. I think I should put a note on my bathroom mirror at the very top, maybe just etch it into the glass so I see it every morning and throughout the day, but keep it simple. Simplicity has benefits in our spiritual lives too. When we can uncomplicate all of the things in our lives and get rid of all the extra stuff, be they physical or emotional stuff, 
then our spirit and our soul has room to breathe and life is a little better. So today I want to talk about five strategies to simplify. So here we go. Let's just jump right in. And I tell you, there is so much spiritual benefit to simplifying, to letting things go, to not hold on to things emotionally, to not hold on to things physically. Uh, start with a junk drawer and get rid of the stuff you don't need. And I bet you're going to feel lighter in your spirit. And I bet you're going to want to continue going further. But beyond just the possessions we have, we complicate and carry around so many extra things in life. So let's jump into this and talk about five strategies for living a simpler life. The big beneficiary is going to be our soul and spirit. So first, determine your priorities. What are your most deeply held values? It's important to know this for a lot of reasons, but one, if you're going to be simplifying and getting rid of things, you want to know what your most deeply held values are so that you know how to prioritize and you know how to choose what to keep and what to get rid of. When you know your most deeply held values, you can make choices in life based on those and really align all of your choices and actions in life with what matters most to you. I feel this is so important. I created a tool to help you in this. I'll drop the link to that in the comments so that you can have it. It's a free download and it'll help you identify those things that are most important. But start there. Know what is most important to you and to your family. What are your most deeply held values? Second, rein in the digital noise. Yeah, I'm going to turn that finger to myself. Maybe you need to hear this too, but smartphones are wonderful tools, but they're not a lifestyle. Let them be a tool that you need when you need it. Ease tension in your life by turning off some notifications. You don't need to know every time someone comments on a post on social media or set aside different times throughout the day. If you're eating, turn off the notifications on your phone. If you're always checking emails, maybe just set aside one or two times a day when you check email and respond to those. But find, a, find what works for you in distancing yourself from, from your phone all throughout the day. Number three, declutter your home. There is magic in this one. When you get rid of the unnecessary stuff, you can feel it and start small. Don't grab a dumpster and throw out all your things. Start with a junk drawer, start with a closet, start with a little file cabinet, but go through things that aren't serving you. If they don't serve you, if they're not aligned with your priorities and your most deeply held values, get rid of it. You know, share it with someone who can use it. Or if it's garbage, let it go to the garbage. If it's shareable, share it with someone you have in mind. And if you don't have anyone in mind, send it to Salvation Army or to Dove or to other places who share those things with people who need them. Number four, live within your means. A huge cause of stress in our lives is when we get caught up in debt. Don't do this. It is a horribly stressful life if you are working to pay bills, especially if you're working to pay bills that you can't afford. So really simplify and identify those things that are really needful. We don't need all the things. Spend your time with those things that align with your most deeply held values and priorities. Let the other stuff go. If you have debt, pay it down. When you get that paid down, you will feel an incredible lightness. You're no longer working to pay off things that really aren't serving you to begin with. And number five, get comfortable with being alone. It's okay to be bored. If you're by yourself, you don't have to fill that space with entertainment. You don't have to pick up your phone. You don't have to turn on the TV. You can be alone with yourself for a while. 
get comfortable with that. And there might be a phase at first that's really uncomfortable with being alone, but you might find you're pretty good company. So I encourage you to sit quietly with just yourself sometimes. Relearn to relax and listen to what your body's telling you. We don't do this enough, but listen to what your body is telling you. Is your body telling you that something is off or out of whack somehow? You know, we don't always have the time and the space or the bandwidth to catch that unless we are alone and listening and open. So those are five strategies that I could think of to help simplify life. So going through them again quickly, one, determine your priorities based on your values, download, that link will be in the comments, download the uh, find your core values PDF and work through that. It's an excellent tool that's going to help you align your life with what matters most. So determine your priorities based on your values, rein in the digital noise, turn off those notifications, or decide what times a day you're going to be, look at those. Three, declutter your home. Number four, live within your means. And number five, get comfortable with being yourself. I'm guessing you're pretty good company. You might want to take some time to enjoy that too. I don't know if I've told you this before, but I take these times that we talk on Facebook Live and I put those in a blog. So if you prefer to read instead of listening, jump over to the blog post. All this information's here and the link to download the PDF is also there. The blog is located at lightlifeandloveministries.com slash blog. You know, I'll put that in the comments too. The blog site will be in the comments and the link to download the PDF to find your core values will also be there. So that's what I have for you this week. I hope that's helpful for you. If you're someone like me who tends to overcomplicate things on a regular basis, this might be really helpful for you. So have a good week, friends, and I'll see you again next Monday. Bye for now.